Hello guys, Jeffrey speaking here. So today I'm going to review another Armageddon gaming mouse which is the Aliencraft G11. If you guys want to check out the unboxing video, just click at the annotation here. Without further ado, let us proceed with the review. Personally, I love this mouse more than Armageddon G13. The reasons are simple. First, the design is sleeker, especially with the interchangeable side grips. The first side grip is bigger and you can rest your third finger and little finger on it. It is very comfortable and suitable for palm gripper. But I still prefer the second side grip which is smaller and easier for me to move the mouse around. Second, the overall build quality is better. For example, the buttons and scroll wheel feel more solid than Armageddon G13. Third, the LED color is more accurate. Unlike Armageddon G13, the pink LED looks like purple LED. I also love the position of CPI and mode indicators which is easier to read. So now let me show you around the mouse. On the left, you have a CPI button which you can change your cursor speed during gaming. One LED means 450 CPI, two means 900 CPI, three means 1800 CPI, and last but not least, four LED means 3600 CPI. However, you can change the setting manually up to 5040 CPI through the software. Beside the blue LED, you will get another LED shows the gaming mode setting. You just have to press the mode button on the top in order to cycle around the gaming modes. In total, it has 5 gaming modes. Red is mode number 1, green is mode number 2, blue is mode number 3, purple is mode number 4, and last but not least, bluish green is mode number 5. Just like Armageddon G13, you cannot customize the color of this LED. Furthermore, you will have a texturized rubber surface for your thumbs. Once again, I prefer this one compared to the Armageddon G13. Above the rubberized surface, you will get two physical buttons which is remappable. For this mouse, it has 10 programmable buttons except for the mode button and CPI button. I will explain more in the software part later. On the top, it has glossy surface. I love glossy surface because it's easier for me to clean up the sweat after gaming. You will also have a 4-way scroll wheel, mode button and a lift button. The lift button calibrates the distance between mouse sensor and surface in order to optimize the performance. First of all, place your mouse on the surface you will be using for gaming. And then press and hold the lift button and quickly move the mouse for 1 to 2 seconds. Meanwhile, the CPI LED will be blinking. After the LED stops blinking, you are good to go. As for the right hand side, you have interchangeable side grip. After you remove the side grip, you will see a weight box which you can put in the weight cartridges. They are 6 weight cartridges and each of them are 4.1 gram. On the bottom, you will see 5 ceramic feet. The best thing about this feet is their durability. Armageddon claims that it never wears off. But make sure that you don't use it on your table due to its hardness. Besides that, you have Avago 9500 sensor and a button to release your side grip. Now it's time for the software. Once you launch the software, you will see 4 tabs. Tab number 1 is home base, which highlights the features of this mouse. Tab number 2 is button settings. You can set the gaming profiles and also macro settings for the 10 programmable buttons. Tab number 3 is macro settings, which is divided into two parts. Macro editor on the right, macro list on the left. To set up macro, first step, go to macro editor. Second step, choose between execute once, loop mode or fire button mode and then click record button. Then all the operations on keyboard and mouse before you click the stop button are recorded. After that, drag the script from macro editor to macro list and you are done. You also have import and export button for your macro settings. The last step is advanced settings. Here you can set manually the CPI for X and Y axis, back up your macro settings, restore and reset. In overall, I love this mouse very much except for one thing, that is the rubberized surface of the side grip. After using it for a year now, it's starting to get sticky but it's not a deal breaker because at the end of the day, it still depends on how you take care of the rubberized surface. 
So that's all for the review today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ciao!